Hey, thank you for taking the time to click on today's video. I'm going to forewarn you, today's video is a little bit controversial because we're going to be discussing door-to-door -door salesmen, in particular within the financial services world. Now, we know that door-to-door -door salesmen are just kind of a fabric of society you know, here in America. I remember when I was a little kid, my mom buying chips from the Charlie Chip Man who came to the door every two to three weeks. I remember my mom even buying the Kirby vacuum. That's right, if you can remember those days. But today's world has changed, right? We have so many accessible, accessible ways of being able to cr procure insurance or financial products or investments. And yet part of the culture of the financial services world is door-to-door -door salesmen. Just recently, I had a couple that called me. and This woman calls in an absolute panic. She's in tears and she is so regretful. And between all of her, her, her mumblings and her, her, her fright, she's explaining to me that they've made a terrible mistake. The story really comes to me in the sense that there's a agent who has knocked on their door under the guise of selling a Medicare supplement, which I'm sure that he was selling. And then he came in and he stayed for four hours and he talked and he talked and he talked and he talked. And eventually they couldn't get rid of this guy unless they actually bought something from him. And before they knew it, they had signed over the Medicare supplements, they had signed over the annuities and they had signed over their brokerage accounts. And I know for some of you, you're thinking, well, I'm far too smart to fall for something like that. And I'm sure that you probably are. But many people today, especially those that may leave, live singly. They don't have that kind of sales resistance. The reality is, is that many of these agents that start in the business, they're told that they're not going to get anywhere unless they dial for dollars, unless they knock on doors and they exude the high pressure tactics. So I want to kind of forewarn you that there's several things that are a bit of an indicator that you're dealing with an agent who really may not have your best uh, your best interest in mind. Number one is the assumptive sales tactic. That's where they sit down, they open up their briefcase, and they put that application for whatever it is they want to sell you on the kitchen table. Number two, they're somewhat recluse when it comes to answering questions, very specific hard questions about the ratings of their company and the financial stability of the company. If they tell you, oh, it's a great company, see here, it's got this rating, but they don't go on to really explain to you the financials of the company and the financial stability, that to me is a major red flag. If they don't want to give you the time to think about what they have proposed to you, they simply want you to sign here today because the sale is off tomorrow or they're not going to be back in this area for a very long time. Those are all red flags. When they refuse to leave things behind, that's also another major red flag. Remember that the insurance agency and the insurance agent themselves, well, they're on two different planes. There may be a high degree of regulation that is kept up on when you're an agency, but when you're an agent, you're someone who's a bit of a lone wolf that's out there knocking on doors. Well, no one's there to watch them. No one's there to really keep tabs on them and make certain that they're doing things by the book. The regulations say that if they propose any kind of a product to you, they have to leave behind disclosures and brochures and ways of connecting with them and ways of connecting with the company that they're trying to propose to you. The bait and switch is the latest and the biggest one. This is where they come in under the assumption of selling you something that's very simple, something that is very inexpensive. But then they turn their attention to trying to gather as much financial information out of you as, as is possible. And they don't seem to be willing to take no for an answer. They continue to ask question after question after question, getting you to wear down enough that you start revealing information to them so that they can then ask if they can see the statements so that they can then compare what they have to what you have so that they can ultimately sell you. Now, again, I'm not here to be disparaging to insurance agents or financial advisors that do door-to-door -door sales. Not at all, they need to feed their family as well. The reality though, is that I want you personally as the consumer, as the client, the potential client, to be careful. It may be that what you have is perfectly adequate. It may be that what you have is already bought and paid for and it's in really good shape and you wouldn't be able to actually improve your situation without creating for yourself a high degree of illiquidity. Oftentimes when you take one product and you replace it with another one, well, now you're in a position where you've just lost the liquidity and the accessibility to that money had you just kept the old account. 
These are all considerations and things that I want you to be careful of, especially if you're over the age of 65. So when it comes to your money, the money that you work so hard for, remember this is something that is not to be high pressure. This is not to be something where the sale is off tomorrow, you gotta buy it today, otherwise you don't get this product. This is something where you need to thoroughly research, thoroughly contemplate, ask good hard questions, and make certain that you know for fact in your heart that this is the right thing for you. I'm Matthew Johnson. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you got something out of the video, I encourage you, give us a thumbs up, share this with your friends. And I'm also curious, put it in the comments below. Have you ever had a personal experience with a door-to-door -door salesman, whether, whether he or she was by themselves or they came in pairs? And let me know, what has been your experience? Do you have any friends that have been taken advantage of, unfortunately, from a door-to-door -door salesman? Tell us your story and what you think about today's high-pressure sales tactics. I'm Matthew Johnson. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, it's up to you to make today a great day.